exercise 13.5, Payback Method. The management of Dietrich, Inc., a civil engineering design company, is considering investment in a high-quality blueprint printer with the following cash flows. And I've replicated them on the screen for you. We have two outflows, one in year one, one in year two, with a bunch of inflows. So we have to find the payback period, and we can do it in two ways. We can do it with cumulative cash flow or declining balance. If we go cumulative cash flow, we're looking to get $32,000 back. With declining, we're looking to get to zero. So let us begin. In the first year, we have 2000 which brings us down to 26. In the next year, we have cumulative cash flow of 5, but we have 26. We add 4 to that. We're at 30 minus our 3. We're now at 27. In our third year, we're up to 11,000 and down to 21. Fourth year, we add another 8. That brings us to 19 and brings us down to 13. Then we have another 9, which brings us to 28 and brings us down to 4. Then we have 8, which brings us to 36 and negative 4. So we can stop right there. And because we are negative 4, we went from 4 to negative 4, that's sort of halfway between the 8. We can say that we have 5 full years and half a year. So we have 5.5 years is our payback. We get it both ways. We can have a cumulative cash flow. We cross the $32,000 mark somewhere in the in the uh, in the sixth year after our fifth year was complete. And it looks like about halfway if you look at the difference between this is eight and we just have to get to 32 which is the midpoint. You get five and a half years both ways. Another juvenile problem here. Exercise 13.6 simple rate of return method. The management of Stilford Microbrew is considering purchasing an automated bottling machine for $80,000. The machine would replace an old piece of equipment that costs $33,000 per year to operate. The new machine would cost $10,000 per year to operate. The old machine currently in use could be sold now for a scrap value of $5,000. The new machine would have a useful life of 10 years with no salvage value. So I've summarized the important points here. The old machine costs us 33 a year to run. The new one will cost us 10. The investment required is 80,000. 10 year useful life, so it'll have $8,000 of depreciation a year, and we can get 5K for the old machine now. So we want to calculate the simple rate of return. If we look at what's required here, compute the simple rate of return on the new automated bottling machine. So our simple uh, rate of return, here we call is our cost savings minus our depreciation divided by our initial investment. So all we have to do is fill in the numbers. Cost savings, it was 33, it's now going to be 10, so our savings are 33k minus 10. That's what we'll save. But that's on a cash flow basis. Remember, our simple rate of return is on an accounting basis. So from this cash flow, we have to deduct the accounting cost for depreciation, 8,000, divided by our initial investment. Well, it's $80,000. But we can get 5K for the old machine, so we don't have to put out 80,000. We only have to put out 75. So if we solve for that, we'll get 23,000 minus 8,000 over 75,000. Canceling out all the zeros, we will end up with 15 over 75. And our simple rate of return is 20%. Exercise 13.7, comparison of projects using net present value. Mitchell Company has $30,000 to invest and has two alternative uses of the funds as shown below. And I've just replicated on the screen here in front of you. Company uses, uh, Mitchell Company uses an 8% discount rate. Required. What, which investment would you recommend that the company accept? Show all computations using net present value. Prepare separate computations for each investment. So again, I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator. You can figure out how to do this on the spreadsheet, uh, I'm sure. So let's start with the easy one. We'll start with beta. What is our net present value? Well, we're only getting uh, one payment, and that's in 10 years. So our net present value will equal the 120000 we get, discounted fully for 10 years at 1.08 to the power of 10 
minus the original investment. That's what net means, right? So we will get 55, 583 minus our 30K, which means we'll have a net present value of 25,583. That was easy enough. You didn't need a spreadsheet to do that. It was just one cash flow, right? On the second one, you can use, uh, you can use the Excel function or you can use the bond pricing function which is uh, what I prefer to use in this in, in this uh, in this case so let's do that uh, we're gonna calculate net present value here so what is our n our n is 10 years what is our i y we're told is eight percent what are our payments per year PMT we're told are 8 K and what's our future value we're told is zero so all we have to do now is compute present value and we will get 53,680. You get the same thing in Excel. So that's our present value but we need net present value which is simply just 53,680 minus the original 30,000 that is going to cost us. Net present value is 23,680 versus 25,583 which is the better one. There you go over there. That's the better one. And that takes care of 13.7.